Hey, it's Ed Bird and I'm back with my toque and I'm not afraid to use it. So back to some structured training in mind of the Yeovil Half Marathon that's happening on the 29th of March. It's coming up very fast, faster than a man who's hungry running to the pizza shop. Today I've got a half marathon training update for you. It's been a little while since I did one of these and I do particularly enjoy them and you do too. I've received lots of messages saying, Ed, where are they? Well, it's back. So the Monday of the past week saw me picking up the Saucony Triumph 17 and I put it to good use that day. It's an exciting shoe with some real zest to it. More zest than perhaps a lemon itself. It allowed me to get up to some tempo paces of around about 7 minutes 30 per mile or over about 8 miles distance. Certainly a solid effort to start off the week. I think it was a good hours sort of effort. Around about 164 steps per minute cadence over the duration of that session. Really enjoying the first outing in the Saucony Triumph 17. If you haven't already, please go and watch my initial review of that. A shoe that I'm really enjoying putting miles into of all different sorts of paces. I think it was a good 66% of that run was at tempo pace with only half of that actually at a tempo sort of heart rate. So really impressive results. Kept the pace nice and steady on that run. And I think there was about 20 minutes, 40 or something at close to that target half marathon pace that I'm aiming for of around six minutes 50 per mile. The next day it was three far from easy miles in the Nike Pegasus 36 Shield. There were some really harsh headwinds that day. It was not an easy run by any stretch of the imagination. I had some limited time to squeeze some miles in, as you do in life. You've got responsibilities, you've got kids, you've got all that sort of stuff. So I had around half an hour's worth of time and I had to use it wisely. I had a great adjusted pace on this one of about 7 minutes 58 per mile. And I'd snap your hand off for that, that was fine. I had an extensive hill climb there, about 150 foot over a fair distance. And I've got to be honest, the Pegasus 36 Shield really isn't cut out for that kind of work. Looking at my heart rate, it almost completely correlates to the elevation profile of the run. Kind of find that a little humorous. So not ideal kind of recovery paces or anything like that here. Just getting some easy miles in to increase the overall mileage across the week. Certainly something I need to do more of is hill work, doing some hill repeats. That's kind of my Achilles heel really. In a bid to get some more testing into the Pegasus 36 Shields, I took them out on the wet, muddy and very slippery country roads towards the north of the town. It was eerily quiet out there actually, aside from the sounds of the occasional tractor, some birds flying over or some squeaking wildlife. So eight miles on the books that day with an average pace of about seven minutes 54 per mile. I just really wasn't getting that much response out of the Pegasus 36 Shield that day. Traction was pretty good really on those slippery and sort of partially flooded roads at times, but I just really found the shoe quite sapping in terms of the midsole. You just don't really feel that 10 mil drop in this shoe. Certainly in the Pegasus 36, you can feel it. In this one, you just don't. I'm not sure what's different about it, whether there's something to do with the, the sort of storm traction on the bottom, I don't know, but it's definitely a different feel. Even when comparing it to shoes that I've worn recently with lower heel to toe drops, this one just feels almost just non-existent. Again, a great adjusted pace there of seven minutes 45 per mile, which is probably a tad more acceptable for what I was looking for but happy to get more sustained miles in at around about 142 beats per minute average heart rate. Clocked in the next day, another five miles to bring those Pegasus 36 shields over the 100 mile mark. A somewhat odorous shoe now, as it's mainly been used over the last four months in mainly wet and moist conditions. Heart rate nice and steady and an average pace of around about seven minutes 30 per mile. So will I go back to that shoe in more treacherous conditions? Well, yes, but only for more treacherous, wet kind of weather before winter comes to an end. So with the 100 miles up on the Pegasus 36 Shield, I could once again concentrate on getting some miles in on some of the more maximally cushioned shoes that I've managed to get hold of in recent time. I clocked up about 24 miles by that point last week, and I was really feeling like quite an easy day was on the cards. So. Headed out for three nice easy miles in the sun in the New Balance 1080 V10. 7 minutes 50 per mile and super low heart rate of sub 132 I think. Keeping things in that moderate and endurance pace all the way. This is kind of a shoe up to this point where I thought it only really wanted me to run slower paces around about 7 minutes 40 per mile. It just didn't really seem like it promoted a quicker turnover until 
to Saturday. So that day I had a very early start, a three hour round trip in the car. I got home and I just really wanted to get out running. I just didn't want to be in that kind of metal box anymore. So I got 10 miles in with four of those with quite a nasty headwind. Over this run averaged seven minutes, 11 per mile. Heart rate average was 151 beats per minute. So I'd had some initial discussions with a viewer, Kev Burmaster. He kind of made some comments on my form and I was really, really pleased to receive them. He recommended some warm up, warm down activities that I could do to help improve the mobility of my hips. He kind of felt that was where I was lacking. He thought my fitness was there, but I need to improve the mobility and it has reaped rewards up to now. So after completing some of these warm up activities, I headed out on my typical trail and I felt a whole lot more nimble and kind of already warmed up when I headed out there. So I did have a couple of enforced stops here and there due to an animal attack, children on bikes, and some stubborn people that just refused to move even though I was kind of heading towards them. But I'm really happy with this harder effort. Far more hip mobility, which transmitted into more propulsion and more power. So about 91% of this run was in the tempo and threshold heart rate range. And about 87 of it was in tempo or above pace. So miles two, three, six and seven were all into a bit of a headwind. So I was really having to push quite hard. And after a view of the splits and the workout analysis, I was really, really pleased with this run. Especially after having about 27 miles clocked up earlier in the week. Certainly the legs weren't as fresh as they could have been. I still managed to perform with some reasonable paces, about 20 seconds per mile off of my target half marathon pace. So clearly that's the trick. If you want to run fast, you need to get in the car and sort of drive for three hours first. I am joking, obviously. So it did change my mind about the New Balance 1080 V10. It's clearly capable of some higher paces if I put the power in. I think it was a good five of those 10 miles, as I say, were 20 seconds off my target half marathon pace. So I didn't really think that this shoe had it in there, but clearly when I put some more energy, some more effort, some more propulsion in there, it's certainly capable. So it's changing my mind. The more and more I use the 1080 V10, it's kind of winning me over. Okay guys, that just about wraps up the half marathon training update for this week. I know some of you guys really love the music updates as to what I've been listening to on my runs of recent time. And I don't know what it is, but I've really been into the sort of New York sound, some of those New York bands recently. And we're not talking the strokes this time, but certainly I've been listening to Blondie and their album Parallel Lines. This is a nice old copy I picked up in a local kind of vintage shop a little while ago. It was kind of sat there, I thought, ooh, I have that. Always been a fan of Blondie, certainly of their sound, really nice, concise, lots of really interesting guitar work and fantastic vocals as well. Debbie Harry just has that wonderful sort of vocal style, uh, really pleasing kind of tone to her voice. Of course, Heart of Glass is on air. Everybody kind of knows that track from Blondie. There's some fantastic album tracks here as well that you should check out. So if you haven't heard this album, please do check it out right away. Another New York band I particularly love is, of course, the New York Dolls. Proper old garage-style rock and roll. That's some crazy get-up that these people used to have. Some of the platform shoes that they're wearing here almost look like they've got a stack height close to the Alpha Fly. I love Looking for a Kiss and Jet Boy, but there's loads of great rock and roll tunes on here. You could say this is one album to put on, crank it up, and then run like hell. So do check these two albums out. Parallel Lines by Blondie and the debut album from the New York Dolls. If you've got any questions on any of the runs that I've been undertaking or any shoe related questions, please post them in the comments below. Thanks for making it through to the end of the video today. I do appreciate it. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button and ding the bell for notifications. Comment below and share this video with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud and I'll be seeing you.